Welcome back to Downton Kitchen, a show where we bring some of the most notable dishes from Downton Abbey right into your home. I'm Chef Nini Wynn, and in this episode, we're getting cozy with this hearty favorite, beef stew with dumplings. Let's get started. In Downton Abbey, we see this dish enjoyed mostly by the downstairs staff. Slow cooked, filling, and hard to spoil, it was often considered the perfect dish for those who didn't have as much as, say, the upper class. This version of the recipe is paired with dumplings, so it's basically a one-pot meal. This is the kind of recipe you get going, leave the stew, and come back to a delicious dish. This recipe serves eight, so it's perfect for a warm, cozy family dinner. I'm already craving it myself, so let's gather what we'll need. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> we're building this whole stew in one pot. And so the first thing we're gonna start off with is some lard. So we're gonna add a little bit of lard to a pot and we're going to toast up our bacon. So gonna let that melt. This is gonna make sure that the bacon doesn't stick. And so we're gonna add this in. So the lard echoes the same flavors as the bacon because it's essentially pork fat. And it's going to help brown and crisp up the bacon. So you wanna make sure you distribute your bacon evenly in one layer so that they all get brown and caramelized because in this recipe, caramelization equals flavor. Wise words for all of us. Anytime you're trying to brown anything, you wanna leave it alone in the pan and not touch it because as it sits, it's getting brown and it's going to kind of lift itself up off of the pan. We're building flavor and caramelization on the bottom of the pot. As you can see, the pot is browning, all of the fat is rendering from the bacon. And this is what's going to make sure that our beef, when we go to sear it, it doesn't stick to the pan. And then we're gonna deglaze all of that because this is the good stuff. This is what's going to make the stew very flavorful and deep, rich in flavor, and, and it's just gonna make it taste amazing. Oh, I'd say that is something to look forward to. Once your bacon is pretty brown, you'll see on the edges like this that they're nice and crisp. We can take it out and move on to the next step. So we're gonna pull the bacon out leaving all the drippings. That's the good stuff. We do not want to get rid of that. I'm using a slotted spoon to just pull the bacon out. And you want to get all of it so that you have enough space to brown your beef. We're just going to set this bacon aside. And now we're going to move to the beef. For my beef here, I have any kind of stew beef is great, as long as you get some marbling of the fat. This is gonna make the beef just so succulent once we cook it down. In the same pot, we're going to sear our beef. Now you wanna make sure you're not crowding the pan because that's going to steam the beef. We wanna sear it. We want browning on all sides of the beef. And if you have to do it in batches, it's okay. You can brown it and set it to the side just like we did the bacon. So we'll leave that alone, let that caramelize. Once you start to see browning on your beef, you can move it and brown the other side, just like that. This is all going to build flavor in our stew. We don't want gray meat. We want nice, caramelized, brown, delicious meat. You really wanna take your time in this step to make sure your meat gets really caramelized because this is gonna really develop the flavor. This determines how deep and rich your stew is going to end up. So it's really important that you brown it all the way around. This cut of beef is shin, but any kind of stew beef is great. As long as you get a good fat marble inside, it's going to really make this stew very succulent. What will they think of next? <laughs> Almost there. 
You really want to develop the color of your beef so it looks something like this. Color means flavor, so you want to make sure you accomplish this. We're going to pull this and work on our next batch. So I'm just going to put this to the side. Making sure your heat is on high because if your pot is not hot enough, it's not going to get this really beautiful golden color like this. And this is what we want. It already looks so good to eat now. And as we're doing this in batches, we're just developing more flavor in the bottom of that pot. I'm working on my next batch. Really taking my time, but it smells amazing. While this caramelizes, I'm gonna show you guys how to cut an onion. Oh, and you're an expert in the matter. I am an expert in every matter. To dice an onion, there's two parts of the onion. There's the root side and the top. I'm just going to cut the top and lay that flat so it's nice and stable. Then I'm gonna cut down the root, so right down the middle. And this is going to keep the onion intact, and we're just going to peel the skin. We're gonna peel the first outer layer of the skin and set that aside. Just like that. To dice an onion, you wanna keep that root intact. And instead of using the front of your knife to cut little strips, I like to use the back of my knife. And the back of the knife is going to ensure that I don't cut through the root. We want to keep the root intact so that it keeps, it makes a nice, even dice, and you have more control over where your knife goes. You could always see that. It's, you're always guesstimating where that tip is, whereas you definitely know where the back of your knife is. And so I just cut it through just like that. And so when you open it, it's all together. And then you're gonna go back and you're gonna cut it the other way. This helps you have a nice consistent dice so that everything cooks at the same time. Okay, so I have my onion here. Let's check on our beef. Oh yes. That's the color we want. So once our beef is brown, we're going to reintroduce our first batch of beef. Look at all of that. It's looking really good so far. We're gonna add our bacon. Give that a stir. You can see all the dripping is basically coating the beef really, really nicely and it's nice and brown. We add in our diced onion and we're gonna let this saute and sweat until the onions are nice and translucent. Give that a stir. And you want this to cook for a few minutes just until the onions are nice and soft. Now that our onions have swept down, you can kind of see the liquid from the onions have picked up all of the caramelization on the bottom of the pot, which is actually called fond. So we're gonna scrape off any fond that's still stuck. And now we're gonna add just a little bit of flour. For the flour, we wanna get a nice heaping spoonful and we wanna coat everything with some of this flour. This flour is going to help make all the flavors stick to the meat and it's going to thicken the stew. So I'm gonna just cook that for a minute or so just to get the raw flour flavor out of the flour. And so we're gonna just toss that around just like that. And while that kind of cooks for a second, we're going to season our stew. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of salt and pepper. So. Salt, some nice cracked pepper. I like a lot of pepper. And now we're gonna go into building the depth of this stew. 
I'm gonna add a few fresh bay leaves. I have some treacle. If you don't have treacle, you can use blackstrap molasses, but this is really nice. Talk about dark and rich. This is going to help build this slight bitterness but sweetness to the stew. So we're gonna just drizzle that right in. It's slow like molasses. It smells like this deep, kind of sweet, kind of burnt caramel smell. And I can only imagine how good this is gonna taste against the beef. And once this stews, this is all going to kind of marry with all of the other flavors. And so this is going to be this deep, sweet note to everything else. We have a very nice warm spice, which is clove. We're gonna add a couple whole cloves right into the pot. Now here I have mushroom ketchup, which I've never used before, but it really smells very similar to Worcestershire. This is very similar and it is an English ingredient and you can really smell, there's some acid, umami. I can only imagine the mushroom part of this is just gonna make it taste like an umami bomb. So we're gonna add a splash of this. And it's going to just create depth. That's all we're doing right now is just building layers of flavor in this pot. So I'm just gonna give this a stir to make sure it doesn't burn. And you can already see the treacles really giving even more color to this. What a colorful life you lead. Next, I have some malt vinegar. We're going to add quite a, a bit of malt vinegar. And what this does is it's gonna balance the stew. So you have bacon, you have beef, you have all this fattiness, this richness, this dark, sweetness, bitterness, you need a little bit of acid to cut through all of that fat. You're not really gonna taste it initially when you eat this, but it's a lingering note in the back when you taste the stew that's really going to make it pop. And so we have our seasoning. The last ingredient I'm gonna add is some beer. This is a classic English ale that is very subtle and has a nice hoppy flavor, and that's going to just loosen it all up and let this stew. So I'm going to add my beer, and you wanna cover your meat about two thirds of the way. And this is gonna ensure that there are some juices, your meat won't dry out, and it has somewhere to kind of basically stew. I'm gonna give this a good stir, make sure everything's worked in, almost using your wooden spoon to kind of scrape the bottom of the pot to make sure all of that fond is loose and it's gonna go into the meat. Now we're gonna bring this up and I'm gonna cover it and we're gonna let this simmer for a few hours just until the meat breaks down and it's nice and tender. I'm just going upstairs to lie down. Can you get things ready for when I come back? Now let's check our meat. Oh my goodness, this smells incredible. So you wanna cook your meat just until it's nice and tender. Now let's start our dumplings. Here I have some flour and suet. And suet is just basically beef fat. Um, if you don't have suet, you can use butter. You just wanna grate it so they're nice and in small pieces like this. So I'm going to just Add my suet right into my flour. We're gonna add a little bit of baking powder. Some salt and pepper. Nice pinch of salt. Some cracks of pepper. And then we're gonna season this with some fresh rosemary. What I usually like to do is I like to pull the rosemary right off the stem so you're not taking your time picking off every little piece. This is going to make it nice and herbaceous. I think that's plenty. So we're just gonna chop this up. You wanna get the rosemary quite fine because you don't want chunks like this in your dumpling. It's just a little harder to chew. 
Now that my rosemary is minced, I'm just gonna go ahead and add that right into my bowl. So we're just gonna mix this in together first. And suet is a very interesting ingredient. It's what people would use back then to prevent waste. And it is meant to be very filling. This dish is very hearty and it, it was for people who didn't have as much. I'm just going to mix all of these ingredients together. And it's really nice that all of the little fat is broken up to small pieces so that it really absorbs into the dough. Now I'm gonna add some water. And you wanna do this by feel because you wanna create a stiff dough that's basically going to absorb all of that stew and all the juices and become even more flavorful because there's only a handful of ingredients in here. You want it to taste really good. Start with a little because you can always add more, but you can't take away. And you're just gonna mix this around, creating a nice dough. And you don't want it to be tacky. You want it to be firm. If it's too loose, once you put it into the stew, it's basically going to disintegrate. So you need this to be a slightly firmer dough, firmer than you would think. This is a very hearty, like stick to your ribs kind of meal. We basically have beef and a nice sauce. So to kind of fill it out, you need something like these dumplings, a starch to really round out this meal. So once your dough comes together, it should look like this. It should not be tacky. It should not be sticky. It's nice and firm. And now we're going to portion it out to put into our stew. Break it up into about eight pieces. So they don't have to be perfect because this is after all a rustic dish. You wanna roll them into little balls. You don't want them to be too big because then they will take longer to cook and be a little too dense in the center. And so you wanna roll them up and then drop them right into your stew. And this is going to cook a little longer and is really gonna soak up all of those flavors. And the flour from this will also thicken your sauce so that it's the perfect kind of gravy consistency. So now that we have all of our dumplings in here, you wanna cover it up. And what's going to happen is they're gonna expand, soaking up all of that gravy, and they're gonna plump up and be so tender. Mind you eat them slowly. Now let's check our dumplings. <laughs> wow. This looks incredible. They're nice and plump and golden, just from the liquid of the stew. So we can turn this off. All right, let's give it a taste. A little bit of the dumpling, a little bit of the beef, and just enough of that sauce to really put it all together. And that sauce becomes this luscious kind of gravy that looks so good. You can really smell all of the flavors that we've put into this. The mushroom ketchup, the malt vinegar has like a nice subtle smell. I'm gonna finish it with a little bit of parsley. And wow, it might be rustic, but it also looks delicious. Now let's dig in. The meat is just fork tender. I don't even need this knife, really. I'm just gonna give it a nice scoop. Break a little piece of that very delicate dumpling. I always go for the perfect bite, so I want a little bit of everything, a little bacon, a little beef, a little dumpling, a little gravy. Cheers. Mm. Wow, that is so flavorful. And it was just only a few ingredients. You have the like slight sweetness from the treacle. The meat breaking down really makes that sauce coats your tongue. The perfect glaze for the meat and it just marries all of the flavors together. It's nice and salty, very savory. And the dumpling, Though it looked like it was tough when we first put it in, it became this really nice pillowy dumpling that just sucked up a lot of the sauce and it's just so flavorful. I'm gonna have another bite. 
and the rosemary gives it a nice herbaceous fresh note that this dish really needs. It makes it nice and bright. Mm. I want us all to enjoy it. This is truly comfort on a plate. It's worth the wait, slow to cook, but so quick to disappear. We have way more downs and dishes coming your way. So join us next time as we come together over our next delicious Downton Abbey inspired recipe.